welcome back. We're making a video on disking soybean residue. It's the spring. It's about April 16th. Uh, several things are going on in the field here. Uh, we are in B2 drought now. Uh, we're in our low bottom ground. And I am disking this bean residue rather than field cultivating it. So, a bunch of the stuff that we do as organic farmers is working with moisture. And you guys, I've uh, told you before, I don't like to use the disc. Well, here is another situation where I'm using the disc rather than the field cultivator. The reason I'm using the disc here is because the ground is dry enough. If you look out across that field, you can see that we're, uh, because we're in drought, that the ground is working up just like powder. Uh, looking out across the field there, one of the other things you're seeing is that there are uh, a lot of green, little, cool season weeds there. Uh, I like to think of the weeds there as being my cover crop. But anyway, we're in drought, it's dry, and I want to be able to plant this field with two tillage masses. So I'm kind of preparing for drought, and I want to do a minimum amount of disturbance to this field. And so if it continues not to rain, uh, by disking today, I am set up for drought conditions. I'm going to disk today. I can come back with one pass of the field cultivator and have a good seed bed ready to plant if it continues not to rain and I will have minimized moisture loss. You can do the same thing with the two passes of the field cultivator, but by coming with this first pass of the disc, if you're looking back there, uh, I am sinking into the depth of the disc. I'm working the soil four inches. And when I come back with the field cultivator, I will only go in three inches. But it's a way that I am using to attempt to deal with this drought by sealing in moisture, working it progressively deep the first time, and then shallower, shallower, shallower. If I came through here with the field cultivator, I'd probably be running at the old three, three and a half inches. By coming my first pass with this disc, I'm coming in at four inches, and then when I come back with the field cultivator, I will be at three inches. And then I'll come back and plant, you know, in that one to two inch deep portion. So, so many of the things that we do when we're working soil, you have to adapt to the moisture conditions in the soil. Now, one other thing you note here, if you're looking across the field, you see this striped pattern. Well, the stripe pattern is because there were, uh, uh, I rode this soybean residue behind the combine and then we chopped that with a pickup head and that's, uh, we fed that, used that to stretch the silage last winter. Uh, but because of that, because of the drought, because we have a fair amount of ground that is bare, this ground is dry enough. Now, if you look right where, uh, where you rode the soybean stubble, that's where the strips of residue are. And if you look down at that ground, you can see that it's a little bit flat. Okay, so we have the, where we chopped the residue off and it left some residue because you never can pick up all the residue when you're chopping behind the combine. But that ground was shaded and so it's a little bit cloddier there. Where the soil was bare, it's working up just like sugar. So, what I was trying to say about that, if you had wet ground in the spring, uh, one pass of the field cultivation would be better than two passes of the disc. Remember, when you start working the soil wet, you have to continue to work it until it's dry or clods will form. This spring, it is dry enough that even in the, the high residue area, you know, where the swath was, uh, I'm still turning the soil loose, so that's the reason I'm out here today with the disc. Uh, you have to be able to read the moisture content in the soil and know which tool is the most appropriate tool. It's 
So that's the lesson for today, guys. Thanks for watching.